Right, oh, welcome back to the Four Wheel Drive podcast driven by Shelter. Uh, the Southern River Band let it ride. We had a couple of technical difficulties there, yep. so we couldn't actually hear it over the speaker, but I we were very close. Everyone else <laughs> listening can hear it. Mate, it's day three of the show, uh, the Perth Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show. It's the end of all the shows. It's the last day. How are you, how are you feeling on the final day? Before we get to our guest, give us your thoughts, mate. I should probably be wearing sunnies right now. That's how I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, look, we didn't have a big night as in like we didn't really get on the tins, you know, on the shelters too much. No. Um, Responsible. Yeah, but I probably had uh, too, too many um, expre- espresso martinis. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't sleep you, last night. Yeah, I was surprised to see you on the double up of the espresso martini. Yeah, as soon as um, I got it, I was like, what have I done? Yeah. What have I done? But let's ask uh, our next guest, mate, how his night went. So, um, mate, Ronnie, why don't you introduce us for us to Aaron? All right, so um, Aaron, but we know him as Azza from Go Camping, a family business, uh, yeah, how are you, Azza? I'm good. I uh, I avoided the espresso martini, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good choice, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. on it. So, um, Azza, um, you are like the product guru. Um, you used to work for Cedar Summit. Yep. Um, so, and I've had many conversations with you, and like you can go into every fiber of a canvas. You can go into <laughs> every little bit that's attached to like. A jet boiler. He did just apologise to me about the detail that he goes into. No, so no, this, awesome. is, this is the episode to send people to sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, telling you, is, there'll be someone that wants to hear it, mate. This, I hope is, so. this is the episode to get the inside on product. Hang on a second, you've got a spider on you. Oh, have I? Yeah, oh, like, oh, cool. Sorry. Lucky you. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to uh, send send our henchman over there, sort that one out. <laughs> got some, it's all, yeah, everyone is typing in some pump yeah. up music. Yep. Cut out the beats there. Right, so. Um, Mate, how, how's it going? Going, um, going good, yeah. Yeah, love and life. And <laughs> got a new car that's uh, got away a bit this year, and um, yeah, which is why I do what I do, is to, to, to go camping, overlanding, exploring, hiking, a few things, and a lot of adventures. Good year for it. Do you want to fill us in what you used to have and what you've gone to now? Um, yeah, in terms of vehicles. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, this, this is my... Uh, my second half of the century on well you know half century on the planet so i've sport myself with a, a car i always love is a hilux um it's our third one um we've gone through a few iterations but uh the extra cab hilux is what we've got now and um the guys at otf who you know have done a wicked uh fit out on the camper um some other crew have helped us out with method rims and whatnot it's a yeah and it's the uh, touring weapon it's, it, uh, that's it's sitting over there at the moment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, it looks yeah. like that. Look, uh, it's my life. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's my life dream. And yep. uh, finally, and reckon that the next, the next uh, vehicle will actually be a, a, a caravan because we'll be like at that age. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're I, saying you're still young enough to be out the back. Still young enough to go up and down a ladder. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I honestly think you guys are still going to be doing that. You, I don't, I don't see you guys as caravans. Yeah, we're, like we're the, eternally young. I feel like the energy that you give, yeah, you'll be fine for a while, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah curl, curl my, my beautiful wife and I, we're, uh, we feel like we've got a bit of fountain of youth in us and um, yeah, we've, we've, got a, yeah. we've got a lot of adventures yet to come. Oh, no, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I reckon, like, especially Curl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mate, explain the business to us. So go camping and overlanding. Um, Ronnie obviously mentioned that you started with Cedar Summer. So I suppose it's something that you've been into for a long time, the industry, and then and then bring us to how you got to, to where you are now with your, your own family business. I guess, um, I mean, you go way, way back, like we all probably do when we were, you know, what, what our families were. Like my, my dad was a 10-pound pom. Yep. Uh, in the mid-60s, came to Australia, landed in Melbourne, bought himself an old Holden and did the lap of Australia. Yeah, right. Um, I, I remember asking him, he's gone, he's passed away, but um, I remember asking him once, like, you know, how much of it was bitumized and stuff. It was like, of a 10,000 kilometre lap, a thousand kilometres was, was, was bitumized. Yeah. No you know, North of Perth, nothing, right? And he went yeah. through all these communities and everything, and this is in the 60s. And so I think there's a spirit of adventure there. He met my mum... She was on the road as well, like in the sixties, yeah, right. and met my mum, and like so. Both of them, I think, are quite adventurous, and like probably a lot of people, we um, we grew up camping and everything. So that that's always been there. Did the Cub Scout thing and all the rest of that, and then um, I don't know I never really fit in at school. I always I did it, you know, it was like outdoor, outdoor education at school, sign me up type of thing. Yep. So I always had this desire. Somehow or other, I just hated school, so I joined a bank. And I was, believe it or not, Ronnie, I don't even know if you know, I was in a bank for nearly a decade. I had no idea. You were yeah, I worked in a bank. I hated it every day, but it enabled me to go travelling. I, I was I travelled the southwest, paid for courtesy of this bank. I, I just loved it. I used to go camping, 
like Friday night, finish at the, the stupid bank job and then go <laughs> go camping until Monday morning. I'd be back at the... Anyway, and then um, I was working in... The, 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 the story is I was working in a bank in the city and I met this uh, this guy who became a really good mate and a group of mates who I'm still good friends with and they took me rock climbing and that was it. And one day I woke up and went, I do not want to work in a bank anymore. I want to work in outdoor. Just like that. Just like that. On the train... I was living in North Beach or something on the train on the way in. I wrote my resignation letter, went in, <laughs> no job, nothing. And just, I was like, I can't do this bank anymore. I'm going to find an outdoor job. And so I started an outdoor store in uh, Cottesloe at the time. I was just frothing. I didn't care if I got paid. I was just <laughs> yeah, frothing just about doing what gear. you love. Yeah. And that was really outdoorsy type of thing. Um, so I worked at that for, uh, I don't know, that was probably eight years as well and loved it. Like, it was good fun. Uh, met Curl. Um, we uh, had a little break went up north and had a honeymoon and things like that for six months and then came back to it again where was the honeymoon we went to Broome moved to Broome for six months yeah Num- it's nine de- months it's a decent honeymoon decent honeymoon right <laughs> yeah. And yeah and again in, in, the, in the second of the Hiluxes the old single cab five speed 1987 no air con <laughs> <laughs> tray back well, it was it was a, it was a weapon and we, we you know that was my first experience into maybe a bit more the desert dwelling type of stuff Anyway, one day um, I was at work at, at this main peak place and um, the guys from Cedar Summit I'd got to know over the years and they rang me up and said, right, we've got a job for you. We need to have an interview at the pub. So, you know, and they offered me this job as an international sales manager. And I said, there's only one problem. I don't know how to do international sales. And bless their answer was like, neither do we. <laughs> yeah, right. So this is, this is a company now that I think is yeah, pretty, um, pretty well known, right? Yeah. And I think I, I got into the gear. That's when I started... Like what is the what is it about gear that you love, and it's the the devil's in the detail for a lot of it, and that's when I learnt you know all these crazy things I've bored you with over time, denniers and thread counts and <laughs> you know kiss coatings, all these crazy things like that, and that lasted for um, yeah probably the best part of a decade, and I think you know grew the grew the brand internationally pretty well. It's a it's a it's a top. 28 recognised brand in the start yeah, of here in, in North Freo, yeah. right? Or yeah, Freo. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, there wouldn't yeah. be many people the, doing yeah. what we do that don't know about Cedar Summit. Probably not even doing what we yeah. do. No yeah, Cedar that's Summit. it. But, I mean, not many people knew that they were from, a, from yep. WA. I definitely didn't know they, that. Yeah. I thought they were an American company because yep. they kept that really quiet. You know? Yeah. And the, uh, I mean, it was four people start. I mean, I could go into a whole back history about that, but we won't. But, you know, one of the... Uh, about you, mate. One of the, uh, yeah, you want it to be about <laughs> They were here on the, um, the well... They've, they've since sold the business, but they were here on Friday, and you wouldn't know. Wandering yeah. around just like you know, and they're uh, pretty, you know, done all right out of it. So, yep. um, but you know, like it was it was interesting. The reason why I left the bank was just this monotony, and when you're in that like the role running the, the globe, <laughs> basically as as a brand, you're doing all this stuff behind the scenes that no one sees. You actually become quite uh, disconnected from product. Yeah, okay. and I, I, in the end, I was just spreadsheets. 24-7 yeah, right. it felt like all day long spreadsheet extra margin this and that and reporting and that because everyone you know I was, I was responsible for every country outside of Australia Yeah. and um, so yeah I just I woke up one day and it was a very much that bank moment again where I went, I don't, don't want to yeah, do this anymore right. yeah. and um, so I, I, I resigned it was quite a sad process getting out of it because I still do have a love for the brand and um, I went camping I was actually on the Holland track and I was like right I, I was offered an interim job in, um, in actually in audio, so I did that for a little while. But I was, I knew I, my heart wasn't in it. I was sitting out in the Holland track with a with a friend, and we were sitting down, and I, I noticed the road, the track that we were looking at looked like if you think about if you if you make a, a rectangular and almost a flag, and you cut the horizon halfway, and the road disappears, almost looks like a dive flag, right? And I was like. It looks like a nice little logo and I sat down and I had this <laughs> notebook and I ca- I've actually got in my pocket I carry everywhere a, a, a pencil and a, a and a piece of paper and I, I, I scroll stuff down and I, I came up with this idea of this this, this brand Red Roads because the road was red I and mean, it was pretty simple to <laughs> me <laughs> and I was thinking back about what it was the product that I liked and um, just all these things come into your mind and I'm, I'm not I mean I left school to go and join a bank I didn't finish year 12 or anything but you'd think you just build up this life lessons and things and I thought all these things that I had seen through Cedar Summit and what I liked and all the brands that I'd seen internationally I used to travel four times five six times a year from Perth around the world yep. 
and I saw all these brands and I started seeing, um, well, going on to the overlanding thing in a minute, but like what it was I was now doing, the Cedar Summit crew, um, they're wicked overlanders. Like they spend more time in the middle of Australia than you could possibly imagine. And they have weapon vehicles. They're eh? 200, aren't they? Just. <laughs> I mean, they're driving a lot of things, right? <laughs> yeah. One of the sickest 200s ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, um, I started writing things down. I remember one of the things I just touched on, it was uh, Granddad's Tool Roll. And I remember, like, having, like, a set of SIG Chrome spanners or something that was, like, you know, maybe 40s, 50s, 1960s or something. And the tool roll was really oily and waxy and still in one piece. Yet, you'd go and buy stuff that was two years old, SIG Chrome spanners yeah. or something, maybe. And um, through what I learned about material, it was like, that's delaminating because the way the fibres are constructed and held together. So I went back quite nostalgic and started getting into the idea of doing canvas products. And that's where um, my love for, for, for canvas sort of started out at that whole Red Rose thing. So, right. yeah, so then I started getting canvas made. And um, I can't sew, but I have some friends who are really good sewers. And I'm mates with a guy who's a canvas supplier. And yep. so I started getting that. And then, um, yeah, long, you had, long, you had all the connections. I had the right connections, right? And then I had sort of, you know, a bit of an idea about the branding of it. And not that I'm, I don't actually have aspirations to be a big brand. I think it's, you, have to, you have to want to do that. I, I, I want to go camping. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you know? yeah. So I want to balance it really well. Um, and I was selling the Red Roads gear to this this shop in Balcatta, which is where we are now. And he was he was on his downward trajectory in life in terms of um, his profitability and things like this. And what was that shop called? Well, it was called Go Camping. Oh, was it? That's how it was called. And it's been there forty odd years. Oh, and he's my landlord now, right? right? But okay. I, I was chatting to him about, and I could just say he was he was over it. He had done yep. his thing, online BCF and everything was not going well for him and i i you know i got some metal stuff done from china which is a bit of a you know an evolution i like to call of other brands and i was selling it to him and he was like i was his biggest selling brand the first week he had it right and i was like <laughs> but it didn't stop his trajectory and i said what do you i needed space i was operating out of my house right yeah. and i'm like oh, i'll um how much rent and you know blah 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 and he's um he goes yeah you can rent it for this and that and he says do you want to buy it the business i said well is it making a profit no I'm, well, it's not much to buy but how about i um i um and you've been in the store right lately. yeah, yeah. ronnie's been in there. how about i uh, polish your floor for you and you give me the name go camping and um but i and he's like yep sounds great and so i think it was about the 8th of april 2019 we opened up go camping and, it, yeah. and this is all accidents right in yeah. life after time and uh so it's been four and a half years of um yeah pretty good times and yeah, nice. uh, i mean you know it's it's retail opening a, uh, an online retail is what everyone says oh how's your online store mm. and everything and um for those who have come in it's like we, we it's old values and I want to treat everyone who walks through the front door like a, an old friend. Yeah. Um, and I was telling actually a, a gentleman just a second ago, yeah, um, the guy who was the owner of the store, let's call it, he used to, you know, have his cup of tea and he's reading his newspaper. That's how quiet he was. And I thought, this is great. I'm going to start getting a you know, copy of the West each morning. Sit, never, never have I had a chance to sit down yeah, and right. just relax. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, yeah, four and a half years ago. So we then sell the Red Roads products. So I contacted a few Ronnie, you put me onto a few brands, and um, yeah, got a few other things happening, and that brings us to the, red, the to to the go camping, and then I added the word overlanding because I realised what I was doing was this thing called overlanding. I and I describe it as you might go camping at Exmouth for a week, or you might drive to Exmouth on the way on the way, yeah, and spend one night there. But what you've done on the way is overlanding. Yep. So that's where the go camping and overlanding. So there you go. That's a it's little awesome. bit of a history yeah. of uh, where we it's are a bloody now. Cool story too, mate. It's, it's yeah. awesome to hear where that's come from. There's there's one detail though that you le that is left out. Uh -oh. So what did you pick up on? Go there? camping is sitting here. Behind go camping is a massive BCF store. Yes. Yep. So explain to us. I know the answer to this, but just explain <laughs> to our audience how it is you're able to survive in front of a place that sells a lot of cheap stuff. Well, I mean. They don't just sell cheap stuff. They also sell good stuff they as well. They also sell some good stuff. Um, <laughs> and I th I, part of it is that I, I'm definitely not a capitalist and I'm not a socialist necessarily, but I'm somewhere in between and I think there's enough room for everyone. So why not just complement what each other does? Let BCF do BCF. Let me do what I do. I'll have a different range of products, different price points, different service. 
um, there's probably 30 products that they have that we sell. Um, we sell as many, we send as many people to them as they send to us. Oh, righto. What, what the real advantage is, is their car park is, you know, has 200 car bays in it and they're marketing what I, I'm guessing a figure of half a million dollars a week you get bombarded by VCF ads. Hey, what's wrong with just being a little store in the front of it where people can come in and just, um, you know, make a, make a purchase, get service. I mean, I'm all about, you know, I want to tell people what not to buy. Yep. I reckon I, I, I'd be the worst salesman in, in reality where, I, <laughs> where I'll tell people, no, you do not want to buy that product. But that's how people uh, gain trust. You gain 100%. credibility. Yep. And I think that's that's the right way of going about it. Oh, yeah. You know? I'll be back for something else. Well, everyone listening yeah. now, even me listening to, to you speak now, Aaron, it's just like that's what you want when you go in there. You don't want to be exactly. taken on a run. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you and, need and, this. And I, I just like, I mean, I, you know, without... Small business needs people to realise that um, you can buy anything cheaper online. Someone's always willing to go out of business to make a sale. Yeah. And, we're, and we're just like, brands like me, and businesses like me, just want to actually, you know, service people, give them the right advice. We need to make a profit. We need to pay the rent. I've got two awesome staff, Chris and Amalia, Curl and I. Um, you know, we need to make a profit. It's the reality of yep. life. So come on in, support the little battler and um, get more than just a product out of it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's actually, so Aaron and I just had a look because I, so I've been into the store years ago now um, and bought a product um, at Go Camping oh, yeah. Overlanding. And anyway, as we were sort of speaking about who would be interviewing at the show and, and Ronnie flagged, we, we should chat to Aaron from Go Camping. And I thought, oh, great. That's, um, I'm, you know, that's, I didn't really know a lot about it, but I sort of I heard it. And then I walked past the tent the other day and I thought, Go camping. That's yeah, I know exactly what that is. That's Balcatter, and then I just double checked with Aaron if that was his product up there. Yeah, so you had and the Red Roads product, there, the Red, which is yeah, our, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's sort of a fifty-fifty thing. Red Roads is important to us, so we yeah. we still we still push the the name a little bit. So I've been know. in probably. Yeah. I reckon that's been sitting on the dash there for at least three and a half years. I reckon. Yeah, so it's it hasn't is it, moved. Is it a dash mount? Yeah, yeah dash, just a little dash, dash organizer. organizer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And it's um, yeah, yeah. served Jade and I well. Western Australia, my friend. Yeah, that was um that was our little sort of safe spot on yeah. the trip back from the Nullarbor so it's been doing me really well yeah. I, I love the vibe you get when you walk in you go through this gate and it, you kind of feel like you're kind of in the outback but you're almost on a farm at the same time and then you've got all these shiny things on these wooden shelves it's, and it's not like these bright lights shining down on things it's, it's this really cool vibe I yeah, like I, it I, um, again you know fortunate to have travelled to a lot of shops around the world and I knew I wasn't going to be a uh, an outdoor shop. We actually, you know, we have outdoor. I call, and this is how I compartmentalise what to outdoor. We have travel, do some travel gear. We do um, a lot of campfire cooking, which is different. Again, um, you don't have to go camping to do ca- campfire yeah, cooking. Yep. We do some four wheel drive accessories. We do hiking accessories. We do climbing accessories, and I, I still sell quite a lot of climbing gear to friends and and some some customers that ask for it specifically. Uh, the dog gear, right? Yeah. That's why that front gate's there. We had Jaffa the dog. And um, <laughs> so I used to take the dog to work. And we, so we built a farm gate. So she was contained. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but it was um, that going back to like going around the world and seeing these stores. I'd gone to some wicked places. Like in, in America, there's, um, there's a category they call hook and bullet. And it's, it's uh, fishing hunting shops. And there's uh, like Cabela's or Bass Pro is these two big ones that are just on when you go to the States. They're next level. I mean, it's, people stay in these shops. For weekends. Really? Yeah. It's incredible. Like, if you ever get to LA, there's one not far out of it, but they're more in like a hotel style. You go and stay, eat, shoot, fish, all in this one shop. Fish. Yep, they've got fishing ponds there. I mean, we're talking (laughs) about, uh, you know, a a place that's got, you know, 300 plus million people versus 2 million here type of thing. So, um, yeah, and their scale in America is amazing. But I just remembered like thinking, right, I've got 250 square metres to work with. What do I want to feel? And so I, I sort of closed my eyes one night and I'm like, I want a farm gate. I wanted uh, rusty tin, which took an absurd amount of time to find. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, but the guy who did the concrete floor ran me out one day. He says, oh, I found some. Are you still looking for some rusty corrugate? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh, I found a guy has got some stuff. It's a bit too rusty for him. I said, well, <laughs> not rusty enough for me. So I went and bought like... 40 sheets of this rusted tin and that's the homestead so when you go through the farm gate you know leave it as you found it um, (laughs) you know you go across what was an exposed uh, floor now right so it's that's the earth 
If you look up, I replaced all the panels with wood to give the canopy a tree. Painted the sides charcoal to represent the fire yep. and added wood slats to it to represent more more trees. Yep. And so you had this whole like got into the got into the farm so to speak. Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate awesome. you uh yeah, noticing it. There's there's a couple, uh, we went past a shop in um I think it was New South Wales, Tumits, and there was a nice little shop that had yeah, kind of outdoors. similar vibes, not not quite to your level that you've done in there, yeah. but it was it was kind of on yeah. that level and it's like it reminded me of your shop and it's yeah. it's really cool and I ended up spending a bit more money than I wanted to uh, uh, on there because you're just like, oh, look at this. Look I'm pretty that. sure it's called Tom's Outdoors. It is. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, is. Yep, yep. How did you know? I, I know it all, mate. Come on. I've been, <laughs> so, so, you know, when I reflect, 27 years of doing this, right? Yeah. So, like, since I left the bank, <laughs> like, yeah, 27 yeah. years <laughs> of doing outdoor. And, and that's yeah. why um, that's why I've learnt so much about. And, I, I mean, I know I bore people sometimes. So I, I Start me on sleeping bags and I can go for <laughs> hours. And hours so on what, sleeping bag. What is a good sleeping bag? What, well, what makes a good sleeping bag from a price point of about a hundred bucks? <laughs> well, and it's a good point. It's the one you can afford is the best one. Yeah. And I, I've got this thing, um, as is hierarchy of wants. I'll, I'll, I'll bore you with it for a second. <laughs> as is hierarchy of wants. Yeah. Be a <laughs> hierarchy of wants, right? Because <laughs> yeah. we're all motivated with gear by four things, I believe. Price, um, it's lightweight, compact nature. And this, this is everything here at this show and this is i encourage people who are listening to this podcast or here at the moment this is how you make decisions just work it out for yourself based on this so we've got price how light or compact it is so that can be a sleeping bag or it could be a canopy or it could be a roof tent whatever um how durable is it and then what's it i call the word usability how usable is it for what you want to do so i'll go to sleeping bags just because i mentioned that um the most expensive sleeping bag. So we made sleeping bags at Cedar Summer. I was heavily involved in the, the design and also the sale of them, of course. Um, the most expensive one was around the nine hundred dollar mark. Um, Whoa, nine hundred. Yeah, 900. yeah. I think yeah. there's actually more expensive than that now. Um, but is it the most usable? No, it's actually the least usable bag in my opinion. That is, when you make when you want to make a sleeping bag compact and lightweight, make it really narrow, right? Less material, less uh, bulk. Yeah. Is it the most usable now? No, because it's deadly uncomfortable. <laughs> is it the most durable? Definitely not, because they want it to be the most lightweight compact as well. So in actual fact, the, the one if someone says, right, well, I don't care what it costs, put that at the bottom. And I go, right, what's next important? Oh, if I'm paying that much for it, though, I want it to be really durable. So durability is at the top now, is it? Uh. Great. Tell us about lightweight compact. Oh, well, I want it to be the lightest, most com compact. <laughs> Does it have to be more durable or less durable than lightweight compact? Be honest with yourself as you make this decision. Don't get, don't get you know, a salesperson to tell you otherwise. And I do that with a sleeping bag. If you're going to spend 900 bucks, but you go back to the $100 one, great. Does it have to be lightweight? Yeah. Well, it's not going to be 100 bucks. Yeah, so yeah, what's yeah. more important? Yeah. So, yeah, lightweight, compact, um, the, the price, the durability, which is quite often offset, just by the sheer va nature of lightweight and then how usable is it? I, I feel guess like next time I go shopping, I need to <laughs> take out like, yeah. everything, <laughs> everything. You should, you should sell these little cars that have like, you know, like this. That sounds like an ABC doctor's yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. you go that. Oh, uh, yeah, all right. That's so how we're going to do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's so true. And that's where you go into the boring things I've told you about, Ronnie, before. Like there's this thing called Denia. I'm just going to give you one techie. Thing. Yeah, yeah uh, I want to I hear this. Denia is one of my favorite. It's, it's actually a... People talk about a thickness of material. It's not. It's actually a weight of material, and it comes all the way, way back to the Silk Age. Weight right? or density? Weight. Weight. Nine kilometers. Now, now, I may make a little mistake. It's been a few years since I've spoken about it. it nine kilometers of silk from memory weighs one gram, and therefore it's one ounce. Nine kilometers of silk weighs one gram. Nine kilometers of silk weighs one gram. All right? So that that's from my memory, and comments in the in the podcast section for <laughs> correcting me but it's something like that where you have a, a denier is related to weight so you have um uh, we were doing stuff at, at the old place 30 denier and 70 denier they were the two things so 30 grams per nine kilometers but it is also <laughs> right. roughly related to the thickness because the okay. but there's a dense it's a density thing denier so um and then so the thicker you make it or the heavier denier yeah, it's got a sort of a natural durability that comes with it but it also makes it heavier. Right. So then you think about outdoor adventure gear. Do you want to carry it on your back? 
if it's 70, well, it's double, 30, you know, double 35 type of thing. So, um, you know, that's why that back to the hierarchy of wants, you can, you can really go like, right, yeah. I, this is what's important to me. That's yeah. awesome. I like, I like it as yeah, it's hierarchy this, of wants. This is, um, <laughs> this is a really good way of like scaling down to make a decision. And like, I wish I knew this before because often I've gone and I'm like comparing price and like, yeah, it's, you, Look, you're going around in circles without considering the other things you just put in there. Yeah. And, and you know, so I remember one thing that we ch- you came in, I remember, and I was the source bottles and just things like, you know, in the car. Like, this is how I adapted to so many things about, you know, weight in cars. And you, yeah. you're the master of talking about it. And like, we're talking about one day the tomato sauce bottle. Like, if you're going on a weekend trip, you don't need to take the litre of tomato sauce. Depending gonna, who you are. Well, depending who you are. Okay. There might be some <laughs> sauce monsters out there. <laughs> But, you know, just like talking about the effect of that on the car performance. Yeah. Like, and because you're not doing it just once. And this is the thing about product. You're not buying one product. If you ever, if you emptied the Ragnarok and laid out every product, there'd be thousands and thousands and thousands of products in there. I think you'd be quite proud of how I packed this car oh, compared to how I used to pack. I am. I'm proud of you, Ronnie. <laughs> you're definitely, definitely an influence on it too, you know. Good man. Yeah. Well done. Hey, Azza, what's the future of your company, your product, mate? Like where, I suppose, what you're doing um, yourself, but where you also see the industry, um, and will that affect the way that you sort of design and develop a product, or are you, are you sort of set with what you've got because you've you back that in now with the quality, and, and you just know that's going to stand up? Like where do you, yeah. where do you sit on that side of things? So I think um, there's always something new. Yeah, right. There's always something new, and there's always a solution to be made. And we we used to do it again at Cedar Summit. It's solutions of what what is the problem, how do we fix it type yep. of thing. I think um, overall, there's a lot of products that we've seen the peak of, I believe, the peak of their um, lightweight nature. Okay. And I think things are going to get a little bit more. I, I mean, I'm still on the canvas bandwagon. Mm. We're in a car and I want durability yep. rather than I want the lighter weight type of stuff I think we might have seen yes we might have seen the peak of lightweight potentially Um, I think people are coming back going oh I'm spending a lot of money and things aren't lasting Um, I'm I'm always going to spruik the um, things that last buy once buy right Um, I think we'll just continue to find products that buy once buy right Um, you know there's nothing more um, damaging to every every part of the world than things that don't last and fall off cars, for example. Yeah. And we've all been places and we've seen a, a certain brand laying on the side of the road because it's not built to last. It's built to turn a profit for that company. Yep. Um, and that ripple on effect is that all of a sudden the landowner says, no, you're littering your cruddy product. So I think buying right, buying once um, is going to still... Uh, and I think a lot of very mature purchases at shows like this now, uh, they're going to they're gonna use that type of methodology a lot more. Well, I hope they are. Yep. Um, yeah, but there's always like, an, uh, always a wicked new product out there that, without a doubt that someone comes up with. Every now and again, I think I come up with one, but, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big journey yep. from there in your brain to um, to sitting on a shop floor. Yeah, absolutely. There's, yep. there's also some products that come out that, that I might think is a complete ridiculous and stupid idea, but many other people think this is really good and you're like wondering why... why they, I'm probably using stuff that are like, I wouldn't use that. Mm. So there's, a- there's a lot of products right. suits different people as well, but... <sighs> Choice. Yeah. That's why there's choice of colours. There's why, you know, choice is a very important factor. And again, go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to our shop, for example. Like, um, we want to give people choice that they can't get from the BCF behind us, but maybe it's not right for them. And so we, we happily send people to BCF yeah. and say, hey, I've seen this product out there. Yeah. It's not right for us in our store, but it's, it's right for you. It's a really, really cool mentality, and it's quite refreshing to hear that. Oh, and, and it's good to hear that BCF are doing the same to you. Like yeah, oh, yeah, we get back. people, yes. people come in awesome. saying, I was out the back of BCF and they've, they've come in to yeah. see you. And, you know, there's. You know, for every little store, there can be a big store and vice versa. Like anyone from BCF listing in, you know, encourage little retailers to survive. Mm, you know, yeah. because we are, and, 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 you know, suppliers in general, they'll support the little guys. Yeah. That, because, you know, little that's where people ecosystem. are coming in yeah. to look <laughs> yeah. at what's happening with your brand. Make sure you support us. Give us some. Give us the ability to pay off the rent first and foremost, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I, well, yeah. you go. Uh, you, so I'm going to step go. away from the. I'm going to step yeah, away I'll, from the yeah, business. Yeah, also too. Oh, so you, you go. Hang on. <laughs> Papers, rock, scissors. Who's <laughs> yeah, going? We're playing too much. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. That I'll was go rock. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> All right. Um, camping wise, uh, I know some of the answers to this, but what, what 
Are you like a beach guy? Are you a bush guy? Or are you a desert guy? What oh, are you? Good. Yeah, great question. Um, so And why? It's pretty much where I was going to take it. Anyway, right, so. right. Up to my time with um, before Cedar Summit, I was beach. And these guys, you know, Rolly and, and Penn and Tim and the crew, they introduced Curl and I, I think. That was my turning point for desert dwelling. Right, oh, yeah. and for that's 17 years ago, we started going desert. Um, we went up to a trip to the Carnarvon Ranges, um, which Ronnie's going to try and organise a trip for us one day through his contacts, <laughs> um, which is just off the canning, and it was just wicked red dirt, um, fresh water. It was just a, a w- amazing experience, and these guys have been doing it for years, and they were doing it really, really well. Um, so that started us on the desert path and uh, you know we've just been we call ourselves desert dwellers more than we do beaches how, how long yep. ago was this that was 2006 ish yeah okay. and and we just oh, oh, and started exploring um the bush a lot more uh i love the great western woodlands that's um directly to perth's east all the way past kalgoorlie yeah. and surprisingly a long way north um yeah, okay. where it's the, the size of england right what's that it's the size of england oh the great western woodlands is w- Unbelievably ecologi- ecologically amazing, um, and yeah, huge. The tr- you, know, you go four hours north of Perth, four hours east type of thing, and you still got trees that are twenty meters tall type of thing, yeah. um, which is wild. So we started doing that, but you know, it's interesting, and I think you knew that I was going to say this. So we've been doing that right the way through. Uh, this year, we took a trip to Ningaloo. We got invited with some friends. We're like, ah, we don't really do the ocean much anymore, yep. or, you know, don't swim with the, the fish or anything. And um, I grabbed a couple of kayaks off of a friend, and um, we were just like, oh, we'll just paddle behind you while you're out there snorkeling. We'll just. Anyway, I jumped over into the Ningaloo Reef, just just at the edge, right? Yep. We we're a kilometre and a half offshore in this beautiful lagoon. And um, I was like, oh my God, there's a lot of fish here. <laughs> and it was a school of dark. Surrounded, oh, yeah. and you're just looking and going like these guys are just like looking at you, and you're looking at them, and you're <laughs> and you're just swaying in this dance. I mean, I don't know if you've done it recently, but the the currents just taking all of you together. Anyway, I popped up and said to Curl, "Hey, you've got to jump in here and have a look at this." She said, "No, no, 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 you know, scared of the ocean, not you know, not yeah. not a, she could swim, she's strong, yeah, 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 but just you know the, the things blue. the things that are down yep. there, right?" And anyway, she I said, "No, you're jumping in," so she did, and four days later we finally dragged her out saying come on that's enough <laughs> yeah. uh, so it was a real realisation of going to the Ningaloo so we'll probably try and do some more you know Windrabandi type of stuff yep. um, you know that, that whole coast there and a bit more we'll try and incorporate it because we still love uh, a, a beautiful campfire under the trees yep. um, and we make we make a thing of it yeah. like most yep. people do I was telling you about some of our party lighting and yep. things like that <laughs> and um, we make it a thing we cook a lot you know we've got Harry to thank for things like that. Yeah, um, Gee, that's, you know, that's starting to hurt smelling that. Now, oh yeah, it? <laughs> I've just done. A, I've just done a. Uh, I'm, I'm fanatical about chicken wings. I've just done a how to cook chicken wings with Azza with oh, our well. friend at Charbro this morning. Um, so we we spent we get to camp. Unlike Ronnie, who goes to camp in in, in darkness, we we find camp about four o'clock, and it's a <laughs> yeah. bit of, well, that must be nice. It's a bit of a dance again. <laughs> learnt from my old friends who who taught us. It's a bit of a dance finding the right spot yeah is there a good tree to bounce the fire off is there a bit of water maybe enough firewood around it so it's a yeah. so yeah. we we'll always go to the desert hey yeah. look dude we got to camp in the daytime oh, evidence very kind well, of once you. yeah we, very we, kind we, of you daytime <laughs> we were there at like three o'clock it was like what? we had hours what? of daylight what did you do <laughs> well one out of three <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. it made up the for the other night yeah. Um, yeah. it's amazing though how many people have come on and said that desert is their their favorite it's just it's a there's a calm that it obviously comes about it where the, the, the ocean is quite a hostile environment, you know, sea breeze, Freo Doctor yeah. type of thing, yeah. comes in every day, it blows sand everywhere. Um, it's it's pretty aggressive in that sense, whereas the desert has, especially in the in the winter months between mm. April through September, yeah. it has this real calm about it. Hot yeah, days, okay. cold nights, it's conducive to campfires, um, and it's very relaxing. We... You know, even when we have a, a day, of, like we, we were, the shop's open on Saturday at three o'clock and we've specifically done it to three because we got the new car, it's packed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the rooftop's made, the bed's done and we, uh, we can, I won't say where it is, but there's a spot um, and we're within 55 minutes, fire's on, chairs are out, 
Oh. Beers in the hand, cheese board is made, and we're sitting around. Yeah. And I think what's so good about that is that um, one night under the stars is therapeutic for yep. anyone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. It, it just it gets. We've only just got back, but it just sitting around yeah. talking about that, listening yeah. to that, You've just makes you want to go trip. again, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, just like, go back. Straight away. Just want to yeah. go back, yeah. Um, next week. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Where are you off Swagging to? Swagging it this time. Oh, that's, oh, okay. That's that swag trip. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's a place that's not too far away. Probably the same distance. Not the same place, but um, not going to say where it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, On the podcast. Um, how long have we been uh, there, Jaden? Have you got a... 37. 37, right. Should that's good. Uh, five? Well, I'd, I wanted to just ask Azza before we do yep. around the type in. Um, mate, where, so we didn't actually really touch on where we find you. How do we get to you online? Um, pump up the pump up the business a bit. How do we get to you? Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're a physical store, nine minutes. I timed it one day. Nine minutes north of the Narrows Bridge. So <laughs> even if you're south of the river, it's just another nine minutes. <laughs> Free parking out the front door. Right, it's it's not far. Um, it's at 58 Arendelle Road, Balcatta, uh, opposite the Odin Tavern. For a lot of people know the Odin. That's um, Daniel from Dometic's favourite, actually. The Mate, how good is it? <laughs> <laughs> Billy Walker and Greg Walker. Yeah, <laughs> and um, they've got new chefs in there. It is. It's one of the best. Kicking off, right? Up. I know. I'm, I'm giving them more kudos at the no, moment. That's no, that's no, small. But, um, but yeah, straight straight opposite the Odin. Um, you still play poker there at the Odin. I don't know. Yeah, you love to. your poker, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like. Anyway. But, uh, Monday, Friday, 9 to 5, Saturday, yep. 9 to 3. We used to open Sundays, then we realised we all need a day to go camping, right? Absolutely. Um, and we've got a website, Camping Overlanding. Um, the Go Camping one was taken. So, yeah, Camping right. Overlanding is our website. People say, you know, oh, you must be doing all right online. Actually, no. We want you to come in the shop. Yeah, yeah. We want you yep. to come in and be treated like a champion. Yeah. Well, I think after listening to this, people are going to want to go in and yeah. just meet you, Azza, and, oh, uh, so. and have a look yeah. at the products. But, um, mate, thank you for sharing that. So, we, we've got a we've got a little segment called Around the Tie Pits. And Maxis are on board now. They uh, they sponsor this little segment, which is awesome. Nice. Um, and and you've got the Trepidor back here, which is an absolute and there's, monster. Wow. There's a bit of a surprise I got for you. Um, for Around the Tie Pit? Yeah. And you, you're kind of oh. going to have to wear it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wear it, physically wear something. Physically wear something. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know so, about this, so yep. I'm used Dan's going to bring it in. Oh, oh this is in this bag. I think you've got to wear that for the segment, mate. Oh, yeah. I, I actually don't mind this jumper. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that on happily. Well, there you go, mate. It's an, it's an early early Christmas present for you. Oh! <laughs> yeah. oh. There you go. Yeah, the that ugly is sweater. awesome. Yeah, I'll have worn it a few times. <laughs> that is wicked. Go, Maxis. Does it smell the like ugly, that? The ugly... The, what do they call them? The ugly Christmas sweater? The ugly Christmas or sweater. Seasonal ugly sweater. Sw- yeah, right. It's not ugly. It's, ugly it, about well, it's probably a good time to wear it because there's a storm coming in. Yeah, how much time do we have? I think we've got enough for around the tire pit. That's all right. Looking good, yeah. Liam. Mate, it's su- you suit good. that. He's rocking it. Hey. Everyone like that or not too bad? <laughs> I'll take it. Do I get to keep it? Yeah, mate, you can keep oh, it. Yeah, it's yours. Oh, it's yours to keep. Happy yeah. the Christmas. I better put the Christmas tree out when I get home. <laughs> so do we actually have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> You've come with a jumper, mate. No questions. Oh, uh, Yeah. I'm a bit stunned by the shirt now. Oh, so. we do have questions. Oh, oh Daniel from Dometic. We've got, we've got a bit of an audience too. Aaron, we'll try and get some Daniel, questions as well. Daniel, Aaron, he's a big fan of the podcast, mate. Oh, good. Thank you. Lauren, yes. Yes. Yeah, so I've, just for a quick run. Oh, did I tell you this about the... So I, I, Daniel's in uh, in Sydney and on the trip over east. So my partner and I went over east and we... Um, we're doing a little bit trip up the south coast and we're going via Sydney and obviously on to we ended up in Queensland anyway uh, we went past uh, Dan from Dometic's house and um, anyway he's he's come up with the grand idea I was going to skip like right past go back past like the Eastern Creek dragway where the Sydney show is and skip all of Sydney because like stuff driving into yeah, Sydney yeah. Um, middle of the day and anyway I totally understand that one he's come up with a grand idea of going like take Lauren over the Harbour Bridge he's never been over the Harbour Bridge before like just drive over that go for it and anyway I've taken off. Um, I've, we made the decision. We'll go through Sydney. We'll go and have a look. Try and find the Harbour Bridge and get over it. And anyway, driving along, I'm sitting in traffic. It's like it. It was a weekend, I reckon, as well. We, we are like bumper to bumper, barely moving traffic. That's Sydney shocking. Yeah. And I'm on holidays, so <laughs> I don't want to be sitting there. Tick, 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 yeah. And uh, and anyway, there's six lanes which we don't have in Perth. I'm not used to. And um, it's on the maps. It's sort of telling me stay left, but it was like left of the the tunnel that was going down I stayed left of the, the bridge going up and anyway I, I've realised probably 10 minutes after that exit that I've taken the wrong one 
<laughs> and anyway, we, we're starting to, like, I'm starting to stress out. It's been probably an hour part. He said eight minutes longer than what it would have taken you to go around the far one. And anyway, it's been like an hour longer and I'm still, I an still haven't reached the Harbour Bridge. Way. I don't know if there was a crash or something going on, but it was, um, it was full on. Anyway, I've got... I, I can see the bridge. I can see the top of the bridge, like a glimpse of it through the corner of my window. And anyway, all of a sudden, we start dipping down this next <laughs> tunnel. <laughs> and I, I'm looking at the bridge. I'm saying, Loz, I don't think, I don't think we're getting over the bridge today. We've dipped down and we've come out on the other side of Sydney. And I oh, just, uh, there was no turning around. There was no turning back. And I sat in that traffic for way longer than I wanted to. I was already pissed off that he told me to go there. And Lauren's like, I'd love to do that. You did, you did it on purpose. Now, you got to, you got to send him yeah. on a, on a, on a been, route around yeah, Perth. Yeah, he's been in Sydney long Mate. enough to send me down that one. But I, <laughs> I was a long doing, tunnel. saw the top of it. And I'd, I'd driven over it before, so I couldn't give a shit. But I was, I was saying, I was like to Lauren, it would be, would be cool. And anyway, that's um. So I do, I need that Garmin Overlander or whatever you've yeah. got in look, there. Look, look, even with that, I was pissed off. Nah, even with, it's not going to help, right? See that all that bundle of wires on the ground there? Yeah. That's, okay, that's, that's not even Sydney traffic. Yeah, so I know. picture like a bowl of spaghetti. See, see if you guys agree to this. You get a bowl of spaghetti, you tip it onto the floor. Then you catch a whole bunch of ants, as many as you can, and you throw them on that bowl of spaghetti. Yeah. There's Sydney traffic. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, man. Uh, well, he grew up in Perth, too, so he's, he's obviously been able to get himself used to it. But thank you for being involved again, Daniel from Dometic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, and, uh, the Garmin Overlander, does it have a lane marking on it? You know, the four arrows? It says, this is the lane you've got to be in. Well, that so that's what I need, because I was on the well, bloody does. phone. But I, yeah, yeah. Oh, it does have it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, right. Pretty sure. I could be wrong, but it, most of these GPS units have got the lanes, arrows. Yeah. And I only know this from this morning, the Uber in, because we, we needed the Uber oh, yeah. in today, mate. My dear driver did not, he didn't follow the arrows. The lanes, so he yeah. was over in the left lane when he should have been well, in the right lane. Oh, yeah. You know? So there you go. That's my tip. I, well, yeah, and I'll take that on board, because I do think it was maybe user error. Because um, it happened a few more times on the trip, especially when we got like towards the Gold Coast, and I, I was I was doing loops because I I kept <laughs> I kept stuffing up, and I don't know if I was watching, probably looking at the water or something like that. But anyway, I learned my lesson, there. and I was then Sydney's hard enough to walk through, let alone drive through. Oh, so yeah, I'm yeah. trying to drive that thing through there. I sh- shit myself. Look, anyway. um, <laughs> I've oh man, I, I, I remember once just just still in Sydney. Uh, I think the first time I went to Sydney, I went to watch the car before the four-wheel drive show, right? Yeah. In Sydney. And I kept trying to get to this car wash. I kept taking the wrong lane. I was a toll, toll three times. Yeah. I did, and I was like, nah, I'm going, on a, I'm going on a show with a red car. Yeah. Stuff this. Uh, actually, the toll, the toll letters are still coming. I was going yeah. to oh, three. Oh, you didn't do the app thing? Nah, I left oh, it too late. Oh. Now I'm getting the letters in the mail. Oh, so oh, oh. I've paid Sydney. I've still got to pay Melbourne and Brisbane, I reckon. Um, anyway, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully this yeah. comes out after I've paid that. Brisbane can um, be expensive. Did you guys have a question? Uh, who was it, Jaden? Who had the question for us? The who, sorry? Well, 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 Do you want yeah. to maybe grab his attention before for you, us? Before you get his attention, um, so <clears throat> I didn't know that you had the arrows on, on the Garmin, but the way I do use mine is when I'm in the suburbs, right? Because you don't know um, which roads are the main arteries in the suburbs sometimes mm. because they're kind of really squiggly. If you go on the, um, on the overall map and you zoom right in, you can see which roads connect up. Yeah, and right. I use that if I'm going through suburbs and I'm trying to avoid, like trying oh, to find right. a new rat race or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty handy for that. Yeah. All right, there yeah, you go. Cool. Oh, you know, oh, Red Hat's gone? Ah, oh, Red Hat's out. Okay, that yeah. would have been nice. No Red Hat. That would have been nice. Um, I've got to, um, how did you come to meet Ronnie? Because that's been a, a common... Oh, hang on. I was oh, just about to get into a cool story. Do I get a front runner box? You have to take the contents with you. What's in it? What's going on? Hang on, let's have a guess first. What, what, do, you, what do you think is in there? Oh, maybe a few uh, cheeky <laughs> shelters. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> is this always like this? Uh, it's, it's been there for a while. They've been in there for about a year. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, <laughs> are they, are they uh, fresh? Oh, look, these are over a year old. Can you old. see that, Adam? Oh they got a best before date. Mm. Is that what you were talking about that time, John? It's sugar, they'll last forever. Yeah, they're far fine. out. Well, you can t- they don't taste like marshmallows anymore. Uh, marshmallows they just taste like sugar. You want one? <laughs> Sorry. I mean, really, who <laughs> takes yeah. a, who takes a, a front runner salty. box of marshmallows oh. camping? <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah. Look, I've this, never seen. 
I was doing this uh, competition and I bought all these marshmallows and I chucked them in and then someone had to guess how many there were. Uh, now I, I painstakingly counted every single one. I'm stuck. What so, was it? What? So the prize wasn't a box of marshmallows, obviously. Either. No, no, it was. Uh, I can't remember what the prize was. It's Liam's prize. Mate. All I remember is I mean, the marshmallows. Mate, this is like Christmas for you today. <laughs> Look at this. Exactly. <laughs> so the question. It's genuinely heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, oh, it's a mega oh, yeah, one. Yeah, we got the, the big ro- ones too. Yeah, the Rocky yeah. Road. Uh, yeah, no good. Rocky Road ones, I think. The Rocky Ridge or whatever it is. There's some yeah. more in there. <laughs> not Rocky Ridge. What's it? There the you other one. Jump into them. I'm not going to eat them all. I'm not sure if they're good though still. Yeah, you might get sick, but I just ate two. <laughs> um, so yeah, last question, mate. How'd you meet Ronnie? So Ronnie, he knows everyone, and I'm just intrigued about it. I, heard, I heard of Ronnie. Someone <laughs> gave me the heads up at our first show that we did at the other place, not this one. Um, and this guy said to me, oh, keep an eye out for this guy, beard guy. Ronnie, he's a really nice guy. He's, he'd be wandering around. And I, I don't remember seeing you there, but somehow or other, at the next show, I think you were there. And I don't know. It's just, I actually can't remember exactly. But yeah, um, What I show mean, was it? The one over in Claremont. Not the good show. Not this one. Oh, <laughs> that one. This right. is the good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My, but anyway, I, I can't remember how it happened. And then... Um, I think maybe one of my products, I was trying to, you know, get hold of him. And I'd met Harry about the same time. Oh, right and, yep. you know, just, yeah, I think he just, just got through. some products. And yep. there you go, mate, have a go with that. And He seems to have yeah. weaseled his way into a few places, this bloke. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Remember, I remember you had uh, two, 250,000 followers at the time. No, it wasn't quite. You were just passing 200. Okay. That, that was about the time. You you're just about to touch half mil, oh, aren't you? Oh, I reckon it might have been earlier than that. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you were nearly at 500? Well, getting yeah, I'm, close, getting, I'm yeah, cl- yeah. closing in on 500. Yeah. yeah. It's a big effort. It's amazing. <laughs> it's taking a long time. Yeah, no, well so done. I'm choking on a bloody... Mate, they are. I'm choking no on a marshmallow. There we go. Hey, um, mate, we'll leave you to it. Thanks very <laughs> Thank much you. for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Um, I had think a everyone time. That's, that's listened today and, and they're going to oh. see this when it comes out. Um, yep. You might get an influx of customers, mate. I think just oh, meeting you, they're going to be excited about. So, um, and, 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 just I'm, one more thing. There's just, just one more thing. Sorry, sorry. Tell us about Donny. Tell us about Donny. Oh, Donny, okay. Yeah. Donny. So Donny, oh, I don't know, the spirit of overlanding, to me, is an FJ40, right? Oh. I don't know why. It just looks like an overlanding vehicle. Right. And um, I don't know, we just, we had we had an old Land Rover. I don't know if you remember in the shop, a friend of mine had a really old Daisy, yep. the, like 1962 Land Rover. And I, I remember that. Had it in the shop, but then we outgrew the space for a bit. And I was, oh, I'm missing having a an older car in the, in, the, in the mix. So I don't know why and I don't know how I started looking... And I thought, I really want to get this as, a, as something to park out the front of the shop. That's what it was all about, yep. a piece. And I, I, anyway, came across this FJ40 1977, and which for whatever reason, I don't know why, I wanted either 71 or 77, weird numbers, came up, wasn't, in, like, it was on the market for ages in a time when they were being snapped up, really. This is only a few years ago. Anyway, the guy's in the next suburb, so eventually I rang him. I went around, and as much as I can talk the arm off a, you know, leg off a chair, this guy, <laughs> anyway, he was not <laughs> negotiating. He was sick of people saying, I'll give you, you know, 10 grand like lower than you're asking. And the reason I found out was that it was, it was quite an emotional attachment to him. And he had had this car bequeathed to him by his mate, who had had it for 40 odd years. Right. So his mate was a mechanic. For 40 years, Donny was owned by a guy, a guy named Don Jenkins. And so um, it, it, it's just like, it's a survivor car. It, was, it hasn't been, you know, V8 chucked into it or sun raised wheels. It looks like the day it almost rolled off to the rack with a little right. bit of extra painting. Anyway, so um, a lot of time in, up at Ledge apparently. Uh, and on the coast, so Ooh, it was looking pretty good for that then. Well, yeah. the story is that the mate, when when Don passed away, gave it to this guy Graham, and um, Graham's a panel beater, so oh, right. so <laughs> retired, and he just basically cut all the rust out of it's it. Been in all the right panel hands. beaters are not spray painters, so they're not they don't necessarily like to do a colour match or anything like that. So when you get close to Donny, he <laughs> does he's a bit splotchy. He's seen the years, <laughs> but the thing uh, drives like a gem. Um, you know, it's not good for long distances because you know screams at eighty kilometres an hour. Yeah, but yeah. we we don't we live five ten minutes from the shop, so uh, it's a great commuter car. Funny, one of the first days I had it out the front of the shop sitting there this guy it was quite a funny moment because when I when I took over the show I should just say like it had the tiniest little sign 
saying go camping. Like you couldn't see it from the road. Yeah. So I got and trees in front of the road. Like and I'm like to the owner, I said, right, chop the trees down. And the and the gardeners came and they were like, oh, we're chopping into six feet. I said, no, no, six inches, mate. I want to see. <laughs> I want cars to see me. And I put this massive go camping sign up. Anyway, back to Donny. This guy spins around, comes into the BCF car park entry, parks next to Donny. And he's looking at it and it's like, because it looks pretty pretty original. And I remember, it's, like, I, I was looking at him from the front door and I said, like, g'day, mate. And he's like looking and he goes, oh, you're a camping shop. And I'm like, I've just invested like thousands and thousands of dollars in a sign that can be seen from Mars that says camping. But what attracted you to the shop was Donnie. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was like a beautiful moment. Oh, it was like, awesome. yeah, that's worth having having that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So yeah, we, have to, we have to ask the question now. Is an FJ a Land Cruiser? Oh, yeah. The current FJ. Is, a, is an FJ Ooh. a Land Cruiser? That's a great question. I'm, gonna, I'm actually probably going to go on the side of yes. And the reason is, okay, the reason is um, it's still a petrol motor, right? So it's an F motor. Uh, it's the J for Jeep, which is what Toyota... Oh, no, no, yep. no. I forgot you're one of those guys. <laughs> and... Stop. <laughs> it's a cruiser. Yeah. But it's not and land. It's, it's, it's inspired by a land cruiser. It's inspired by the FJ40. It's meant. It's got the grill, right? And that uh, is that's off the, the FJ40. <laughs> so no, therefore, I, that's why I want to fall on the side of yes. It's a Land Cruiser, and I know you just want to give John a bit. Of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, uh, I, I mean, you know, it could be a collectible one day. It's a very debatable. Yeah, yeah, very one. debatable. He got some good numbers over here when I tried right. to sell it. Yeah, nice. Good yeah. numbers. Yeah. People yeah. love them. Um, what are they? Prado chassis or something like that? And six, six, uh, six, uh, three liter. Well, it's actually uh, shorter than a Prado chassis. I thought it was on a Prado chassis. Or yeah, based on a Prado chassis. Okay, so it's not okay. based on an not FJ a mechanical chassis. man. I'm a you know, <laughs> give me a Denny or yeah. a thread count. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm neither. Oh mate, well, right. it's, yeah, been awesome to have you on the show. Thank you. And Thank um, you. It's been a bloody fun time. We're gonna have to and get I'm you on the again. podcast. We need to get into like more like detail on certain aspects of gear later on. I reckon. Okay. All right. So Save this might be the last well, we time. Did. As we're walking over here, someone uh, started giving us a bit of grief about I was going to start talking about canvas, right? Remember? <laughs> yeah. We'll do a whole yeah, episode on it. Another right? episode on canvas. A whole episode on <laughs> what <laughs> is canvas. Don't be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. I'll bring these marshmallows. We'll be right. We'll get right. around the fire and we'll Thanks, roast guys. them. Thanks, um, guys. No, appreciate it, mate. Thanks for coming on. Everyone will uh, get down and check it out for sure. I'll be here next week, probably. Um, so thank you to Shelter. Thank you to Maxis. Um, Four Drive Podcast, driven by Shelter. Southern Riverband with Let It Ride. I'll see us out. Nice jumper. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, How good is this thing?